It's 7 a.m. Didn't you say you had to get up at 5 a.m. to be productive? We gotta at least make your bed now, stud. Isn't that what successful people do? All right, clean yourself up. That beard's atrocious. All right, we're in business. Wait, wait, did you? I didn't say mustache. What the f Okay, well, we can still save this day, so let's do some fasted cardio. Wait, where are you going? You've work to do, dude. Are you eating? You know your fasting widow doesn't allow that right now. Hey! Well, this is kind of pleasant, not gonna lie, but you're not supposed to be here right now, dude. It's not beach time, homie. Why are we here? You've got rules to follow, and we got... Wait a minute. I know what you're doing. Don't even think about it. Jack, stop. Let's just talk about this. If you do this, that would artistically symbolize the entire point of this video to the viewers without you saying a single word. Some rules aren't meant to be broken. And you did it. Ever since we were kids, we were always taught to follow the rules. Don't run on the pool deck, raise your hand to ask questions, and don't stare. <clears throat> and while rules are a crucial way to teach what's appropriate in our early development, when we start to set too many rules for ourselves later in life, our inner rebel comes out swinging and we run into problems. Now, like many of you, I'm constantly chasing the best version of myself, so personal development does kind of get me harder than a rock. And after all, there's no lack of content online with lots of different faces telling you how to chase that best version of yourself. And with all the self-improvement and advice from all these books and videos, I think it's important to remember one thing, and this applies to so many different areas of life. A marathon runner is not going to train like a bodybuilder, and a bodybuilder is not gonna train like a marathon runner. Does that make either of them wrong? No, they're both right because they're both training for what's more important to them. One person is competing in a bodybuilding show, the other one is competing in a race. And while this journey of self-improvement can be absolutely enlightening in so many different ways, it can also become crippling because when you aren't following all these new rules you set for yourself, you walk right into a whirlwind of shame and guilt. What once was just a singular cookie turned into a sugary succubus trying to drain my loins of all testosterone and potential to be a man. If I didn't wake up at 5 a.m., then I'm just a lazy piece of shit. If there wasn't enough protein, I couldn't eat it. The bottom line is on my self-improvement journey, I started setting a lot of unnecessary rules and if I wouldn't follow these rules, then I would feel an overwhelming amount of shame and guilt in my life. So to anyone who wants to free themselves of these unrealistic expectations and plethora of rules, here's how I'm doing it. Imagine the progress you can make on the things you want to improve in your life if you didn't need to feel guilt around it happening or not. Number one is the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle essentially states that 20% of the input is responsible for 80% of the output. So if you focus on the 20% that's producing 80% of the results, you will soon realize that most of the rules you set for yourself in your life are unnecessary. Most of life is very simple, and let me give you a couple examples. Eating less calories amounts for 80% of weight loss success. Not a complicated workout program, not a fasting schedule, and obviously not supplements. Making Chloe feel heard and loved is responsible for 80% of our relationship success, not sex, not money, not my dashing mustache. Though it's surprising, I know. Release the chains. When you minimize the rules in your life, you give yourself permission to make your own choices. It's not I have to work out after I wake up. It's I'm going to work out today, and when I do, it's up to me. So the more choices that you give yourself permission to make for yourself instead of letting a rule make it for you, the less shame and the less guilt needs to be in your life. Stop comparing yourself to what works for someone else. So guys, to those of you who don't know, I have a podcast called The Happy Grind Movement that I do with my mom. My mom is an absolute lifestyle fitness badass. And my mother wakes up at 4.30 every morning, journals, reads, and works out among many other things. And while that works for her, it doesn't really work for me. The craziest and most blindly obvious part though is that it's irrelevant. And I don't feel any shame around it. I'm, I don't have to get up at that time. That works for her, but maybe I like staying up a little later than she does. So my ass is getting up closer to six and working out in the afternoon, and I'm gonna earn the same great results as if I did it in the morning.
Don't let social media or people you admire set a wicked unrealistic expectation for yourself because you just need to go about it your own way. Guys, this is like one of the more enlightening videos that I've ever made. I just think it's fascinating when you just detach these rules, you detach yourself from the shame, how much more amazing life is and how much more productive, how much more disciplined and how much more present you are as a human being because the last thing you guys need is more self-comparison. One common trait I find in every really unhappy person that I've ever met is they're all comparing themselves to other people. And that's facts. So whatever the chains are in your life, let me give you permission to just throw them off of your shoulders and start doing you. So here's to effort, consistency, and a lack of unnecessary rules and getting naked on the beach, which I actually did by the way, guys, like there's gonna be people in the comments saying I didn't do it. I got naked on that beach. So as always, you beautiful people, let's keep getting better together and keep on grinding. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.